Hi, and welcome back to In the Can. Right now we're talking about an amazing film. It's called American Factory, and I have this large crew <laughs> to talk about. Let me tell you who is here with me. We have uh, Julia Reichart and Stephen Bognar, directors. We have um, Jill Lamantia, Bobby Allen, and Wong Ha, who actually work in the American Factory. And then um, Yi Chan Jung, who is a producer on the film. So lots of folks, and we'll get right to it. So Julie, you're just gonna first give us a synopsis of the film. Sure, well, we're all from Dayton, Ohio, to our hometown. And in our hometown, there's this huge old General Motors plant that closed 10 years ago, leaving many people like these guys devastated out of work the whole town was devastated fast forward 10 eight years and a Chinese billionaire entrepreneur bought the plant and started operating it so you have hundreds of Chinese folks who came directly from China knowing no English and all these blue-collar Americans who were factory workers coming together under one roof, and we say complications ensue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see there's a little bit of a culture shock there on both sides. Yeah, a culture I'd shock. I'd say. So Jill and Bobby, then, what was that like, having all of a sudden a completely different workforce that you're working with? Well, it was strained at times mm. because of the translation and because of different management styles. And you have to understand that uh, it was hard on everyone. It hard on Americans, it hard on Chinese, because the cultures weren't really messed, you know, getting together sure. as properly as it should be, as far as, you know, learning the job and doing it properly. Yeah, and Jill, did you have the same experience? I did. At first, well, getting the job, I was so excited because I had been, uh, I lost my job with GM and moved around the country a few times, uh, lost my home, and so I came back to Dayton to try to restart again. And so I was so excited at the beginning to get a job and make good money. And and so first walking in there, I had all these hopes that if this was, you know, I was going to be back home and, and be able to, to afford to live. And then finding out what was going on with the communication style and just we first started off texting each other back and forth, and that was how we communicated, and it was so slow. Mm. Translating. You translating yeah. back and forth. There was a, a WeChat that they had, and then there was a, the Google um, text that would translate for you. And so we were trying to do these little tasks, and, and so it was just cumbersome. And and then, it, then the culture, you know, just trying to learn how to do the work that we needed to do, and then the, the plant being built on top of our heads and lines <laughs> being—it was built. a lot. It was a lot going on, a lot of change, and so there was stress going out the door. Bad. But still, at the same time, we hoped for, you know, this. To, we knew it was going to be a startup company, so we had to be patient and wait for things mm -hmm. to change. And mm -hmm. change they did. Okay. So, Stephen, <laughs> then I don't even have to ask you how you found the story, you were living the story, it was in your neighborhood. Right. Um, the access though, how did you get so much access? Well, we're from Dayton and we are part of the community and uh, when Fuyao came, the company Fuyao came to Dayton, uh, mm -hmm. they talked about we should get a crew in there and someone said, well, there's these local folks who had made this earlier film in the same mm -hmm. plant. Mm -hmm. But what we didn't realize, Wendy, was that as we started filming, we pretty quickly learned it's not, we can't just follow the, the, the old Dayton, Ohio folks right. that we already know. We, if we're gonna tell this story in the real way, we also need to connect and hear and understand the Chinese journey. Folks like Wong moving to Dayton, starting a new life, mm -hmm. family far in China, doesn't get to see his kids. And so we realized we need a Chinese producer who can get in the factory and do that. And that's when we found Yi Chen and our other producer, Mija. And Yi Chen, um, what, did, what, what struck you most about this mixing of cultures? Um, well, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, I, I personally haven't been in a factory before, and um, I think communication is a good, like, a really big thing. And a lot of the time we think about language, words, but also its tones, its context, its how willing you are trying to understand each other. And um, it's not an easy thing to do, I would no. say. Well, the China, Chinese management style, I don't know if yeah. Wang would agree, is very different sure. that they brought over. And of course, they had no cultural training. 
they just kind he of showed up in blue collar. Make him smile. He's starting to laugh. Yeah, yeah. The management style in China is different. Maybe. How you manage people? It's two very different countries, and it's different how we grew up, how we were educated, and um, it's different ways of thinking, but all in the end, we're just human beings. How difficult was for the three of you, or did it affect you at all, having film crews around all day long as you're, does it add more stress? What was that like? Any well, of you? I had, I had been in a little project called The Last Truck, and so I was used to it, and it really didn't cover me at all doing my job with the film crew and Steve and Julia and Jeff and Aubrey and in the plant every day. No more, no more stress. No, no more stress. No more stress. We have enough stress. <laughs> I first met Julia on on my break, and we just had a conversation, and it just started out that way, and it was just like Julia and I were coworkers. Mm -hmm. Really, it kind of felt just like that, and so we were all, you know, trying to just really communicate and, and teach each other, and this is what they're doing, and this is what we're supposed to be doing, and. So it was very comfortable the whole time, actually. I felt very good. How about for Wong in a whole new culture with a film crew? Could you ask him how that affected him? Yeah. Yeah, there's no pressure ever from them at all because right from the beginning he always felt they're friends. It's never a crew or yeah, it's always friends. So he just do whatever he does. Like, yeah. That's awesome. So the, um, when when did you guys start and finish filming? We started in February of 2014, 15, 15 and we finished in December of last year. And but there's not really an ending to this film, no, is there? Well, we filmed what we think of as the end of the beginning. Okay. So we filmed the difficult birth pangs of this huge endeavor. And as it was sort of finally, sort of things were settling down, the construction mm -hmm. was done, lots of turmoil ended, that's when we stopped. And the factory's still going. Mm -hmm. In fact, they're going better than ever now. But uh, we filmed this incredibly challenging early period. How do you even know what to include and what not to include? Because pretty much everything is new. Well, exactly. And we didn't know. When, it's typical independent film. When we started, we didn't know where it was going to go. I love that, and don't we, you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you, walk, you walk into that plant, and first you're struck by the beauty of it. Everyone is lit by almost like Hollywood lights because they have to inspect <laughs> perfect, yeah, perfect glass, you. right? You have to inspect glass. Everybody right. looks great. So you're as a filmmaker, you're like, wow, this is beautiful. And then you notice, wow, there's hundreds, like 300 Chinese people here. And you don't, I didn't know anything about China or Chinese people, so you kind of want to. Our hearts started with the American workers, because we we lived there and we had known and neighbors we knew and people. Yeah. yeah, we know people who worked in there, but we realized we it was a bigger story than that. Like at first, it started as a little story and an independent film. Everybody worked for free. There were family or friends who just would come in and work, but then we started to realize as we went along that this. We started researching and we realized it isn't just our little factory that is Chinese owned and managed. There are hundreds of factories all throughout the Midwest and South. I mean, the Chinese folks are really opening our closed factories. And we realized this is kind of a global story. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the story isn't that China's stealing our jobs, which is what the presidential candidates said. They were bringing jobs to the U.S. And opening a factory, and now you guys are working Lots again. Lots of factories, and, yeah. In terms of what to include in the film, editing started while we were still filming. And there was a year and a half of editing. And we are lucky. We have a totally brilliant mm -hmm. editor named Lindsay Utes. Uh, she was here at Sundance two years ago with a wonderful film called Quest, mm -hmm. beautiful film. And she was an unstoppable force just helping us 
you know, crafting this story, what to include, what not to. And it was super hard. Awesome. Well, congratulations on the film. Since this is just the beginning, we expect to see you back here with the, the uh, next episode, next installment <laughs> of the film in the next year or two. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Yeah, American Factory, um, several times folks can see it. Absolutely should go see it. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, we'll be right back.